BMW. What did you think about your team's furious fourth quarter that helped you officially arrive in the postseason? Oh, it was amazing. What a performance. Um, you know, I think we lost the first few minutes of the fourth quarter, 12 to 2, and uh, took a timeout. And, it, you know, we felt, felt like we had enough time, but we didn't have much momentum. And uh, I was just um, amazed by the skill um, of Clay and, and Jordan. Um, you know, the, the emotion and passion from Draymond um, and then the methodical defense and, and, uh, and energy from Andrew and, and Otto. And that, that group down the stretch was, uh, was great. Gary as well. Um, so unbelievable performance down the stretch from our guys. Um, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. You, you obviously needed a ton of threes uh, in that fourth to, to climb back. How much of a uh, specific strategy was it really to not necessarily go at Gobert, but he was in drop coverage, and it felt like you guys got a ton of threes just kind of walking into to it when he was backed up? Yeah, well, yeah, we we executed a lot better in the uh, in the second half. I thought there was more uh, urgency to our cuts and our our DHOs and and uh, the the, uh, the speed of our ball screens I thought it was all much better in the second half but you know sometimes you watch the tape and you go the ball just went in you know too but uh, I did feel like we we kind of broke the dam there at, at one point and that gave us a lot of energy and and uh, and we just we got rolling from from Clay's perspective you you know he's talked about forcing shots it felt like he was tonight, but it, it looked different. From from your eyes, what was the difference between the clay we saw tonight and the one we've seen when he's scuffling a bit? Uh, I thought uh, early on, I thought he was a little impatient. I didn't think the game started that well for him. Um, but I, I thought he got into... Uh, a groove with a few of his mid-range shots and uh, found a little rhythm in both halves. Uh, and then, you know, we've seen it a million times. If Clay just sees the ball go through through the hoop a couple of times, um, he can make the bad ones too. So I didn't think this was like a dramatic improvement in terms of shot selection. Um, but I think the, the fact that that mid-range shot was there, you know, with Gobert down in a drop, allowed Clay to get, you know, get to the foul line area, pull up for a few mid-rangers. He probably made four or five, I'm guessing, during the game. And uh, that, that allowed him to get into rhythm. So, um, you know, and then he started making the impossible ones. So, but we've, we know he's capable. You, you're always going to want twos, I know, but the way this broke loose with the threes and you obviously you have Steph coming back, is this the way you think you're going to play in the playoffs? Uh, in terms of being pretty three dominant, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and we we've been that way all year, really. You know, we're in the top. I think we average forty threes a game. We're uh, in the top three or four in the league in attempts. Uh, you know, when Steph gets back, um, we're going to take even more. Obviously, uh, you know, the biggest thing is when we defend. Uh, and get stops, then we can get out and run. And, and the flow of the game helps our three-point shooting and helps us get some in transition and, and attack before the defense can get set up. Um, felt like in the first half we were just taking the ball out of the net uh, or giving it to them. I think we had 10 or 11 turnovers in the first half and only m maybe one in the second. So um, that made a, a huge difference. We've talked a bit about how much you guys have or have not been monitoring the standings, but were you guys aware of just how important and big this game was in terms of seating? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were well, well aware. Um, Topic of conversation. Yeah, we didn't talk about it a whole lot as a team, um, but the guys know, and... Um, now, they, uh, I know they were talking amongst themselves. Uh, I didn't sort of present it like, hey, this is the biggest game of the year. Um, I said it to the coaching staff, and I think Steph said it to a couple of guys. But, you know, the, the focus was just on, on our game plan and our execution. And um, the good thing is, you, you, you know, you play a game like that and you feel the pressure being down um, and you respond. That's a good, good memory for when you're in the playoffs in a similar situation. The, the other night was obviously a good sign for Draymond. Looked like he, I think you said he took a step forward tonight. I mean, I think you wrote him in the last 10 or so minutes against Gobert. 
he was really kind of the key holding up the defense and, and doing the DHO. Um, what what did you just see in that match of him and Gobert in the last 10 minutes or so? Uh, I, I just saw incredible passion and competition from Draymond. Um, you know, when when if you don't know, you know, who Draymond is and and you ask him, you know, you ask any of his teammates or coaches, how do you describe him as a player? Um, the first thing you just say is competitive and passionate. Um, all the other stuff, uh, you know, he's a great defender. He's uh, he's a passer. He's a DHO guy. He reads the game. Uh, but the main thing with Draymond is that he's just a winner. Um, he's been a winner his entire life. Um, high school, college, NBA, he, he just wins. And... You know he's uh, he's like the rising tide that lifts all ships. I mean it's 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 true. Like he when he's out there, his emotion, his energy, his passion, and his brain, uh, it lifts up our entire team. Andrew Wiggins was plus twenty six, seven for ten, really efficient. Obviously tonight, what stood out to you most, both sides of the ball? I think when our team makes sense, Andrew um, gets comfortable. You know uh, the last six weeks, um, you know he's been. Um, I think, you know, the, maybe a, a focal point in terms of uh, his struggles, our struggles. But our team has been scattered over the last six weeks with uh, the injuries, the absences, uh, sh shifting lineups, um, playing different guys in different roles. Andrew is, is best suited to play um, a specific role and give us 35 minutes, 33 minutes of on-ball defense and be a support offensive player like he was tonight, um, you know, knocking down threes, getting some layups in transition and in the half court. He was a plus 26 tonight. I mean, he's just rock solid. And uh, I think that's the that's the biggest thing. When uh, when we're right, I think Andrew's right. It, it, he just he fits in to what we're trying to do. Clay and Jordan had a big hug after this game. What do you think about the chemistry they're, they're finding together and even their, their happiness in each other's performances? Well, they should, uh, they should be happy for each other. They were both brilliant. I mean, Jordan, what he's done over the last uh, month or so is incredible. Um, the scoring binge he's been on, um, the number of scoring opportunities he's creating, uh, in pick and roll, uh, and just with his dribble penetration, he's taken on just a, a huge burden with Steph out, and he hasn't even blinked. Uh, so um, Jordan's quite a story, and you know we all know what Clay has been through and the frustration since he's been back. He wants it so badly, and you know Raymond pointed out he's he's had four games with 33 or more points so it's not like he hasn't produced it just hasn't been as consistent as as he would like um but i will maintain that that's that's coming with time um but i'm 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 glad they were happy for each other they sh they should have been they were they were two uh huge keys in the win a big-time win at that in the Utah Jazz. Another brutal loss for them this season. Just the other day, 